We are the losers for the future because the criminals, they are the winners, the big winners, and they earn a lot of money. We all see that in uh, Europe, our leaders, our political leaders, they uh, have um, yeah, the more national views and they don't want that anybody um, m yeah, make some steps forward uh, regarding drugs. Because of the fact that it is illegal at this moment, that causes a lot of problems. And that brings the criminals in position. In France, the drugs abuse and the drugs use is more twice as much as in the Netherlands. And we have there in France an enormous illegal sector. That is what is the outcome of uh, the policy of France. For millions of young Europeans, the Dutch city of Maastricht is the first city across the border in the Netherlands. It's the closest city where they can easily buy soft drugs like cannabis. Gert Leers is mayor of this city and he's very much in favor of a European approach to the soft drugs problem. He speaks out in this exclusive interview with EUX TV in favor of having similar coffee shops like in the Netherlands, in Belgium and also in Germany. The Netherlands uh, took uh, 30 years ago a decision that it is uh, wise to make a sharp division between soft drugs, the use of soft drugs, cannabis, and the use of hard drugs. And we did that because of the fact that we thought that uh, it would work out better for harm reduction, especially for young people. It is better that we uh, allow them to use small amounts of cannabis instead of uh, let them ex exper uh, experiment and also go to the criminal scene where they uh, will bring in the, in, the, in the sphere of also the use of hard drugs. So we made this division. Uh, and that worked out also very positively. If you see uh, at the figures and the facts, you will see that in the Netherlands, uh, younger people are less um, addicted to hard drugs. And that uh, in the Netherlands, there, we are suffering from more, uh, less uh, drug deaths than, for instance, in London and in England and in France and whatever. So our policy is working. What evidence do you have for that policy working? Uh, expertise from uh, investigation bureaus and from official governmental uh, what is it investigation so uh, facts and figures show that the Dutch policy for uh, d uh, what is it uh, the reduction of harm works fact also is that this Dutch policy attracts a lot of tourists uh, when I travel across Europe I, uh, I meet people who've come to Maastricht to Amsterdam everywhere yeah. as far as Austria and Italy uh, Maastricht also has a problem with that. Isn't that really a negative factor that you've created, basically, that the Dutch government basically has created this drugs tourism industry? Yeah, you're right. You see, the point is that uh, because of the fact that only the Netherlands um, has this policy uh, and the rest of Europe uh, still is in rejecting uh, drugs at all, uh, the Netherlands is a, a very attractive uh, country and especially in the border regions where a lot of tourists and a lot of users from other countries come. Um, that's a fact, but there is another fact and that is that in other countries like Belgium and Germany now it is allowed that people have small amounts of drugs, uh, possess small amounts of drugs, but the point is that they can't buy it there. So they may have it but they can't buy it anywhere, so they come to uh, the Netherlands, to Maastricht, because we are a border city, and they come here. And that organized, that, that, that uh, brings us a lot of uh, problems, because all these people come, and uh, because they are willing to buy uh, drugs, a lot of sellers come too. And these sellers, these are almost criminals, they are only interested to sell hard drugs. So in Maastricht, a market uh, developed for drugs. And that is what I want to, to fight. So you're basically saying that the problems you're facing here in Maastricht are the result of policies in Belgium and Germany. That's true, because um, they say that we are exporting our drugs problems because of the fact that we have our so-called coffee shops where you can use small amounts of drugs. But it is exactly the way it turned around. They are 
causing our problems because they sending their clients, their inhabitants to us because in Belgium and in Germany you can't buy it. But wouldn't it be much easier then to solve this problem and c simply close all coffee shops and ban the drugs here in the Netherlands? If that would be the solution, I'm the first one uh, to do that. But the point is that uh, it demonstrated that if you say no to drugs, it goes on the ground. It goes in the illegal uh, sectors. And uh, then the problem is even more and is even worse because then you can't uh, in any way fight against that. So I think it is better to uh, regulate it and to, to keep your hands on it than close your eyes. And uh, that's exactly the fight I'm now fighting out uh, because just saying close our shops, it's simple to do. I hope it is simple, it is not so simple, but let's assume we can do that. Close these coffee shops. I'm sure that there will be organized as soon as possible a whole chain of activities underground in the illegal sectors. And then we have a lot of problems because in the illegal sectors there is just one interest and that is to earn as much as money as they can. So then the real criminal criminals will stand up and will profit from uh, the new way of selling drugs. That's why you believe the Netherlands should remain open in terms of having coffee shops and have the drugs available. Uh, but, but what does this really mean? Let's take a step back. What does this mean for a city like yours, like Maastricht? Uh, we're seeing figures of one and a half million tourists per year. That, those are massive figures. And it must be a very significant factor for the life on the street here in Maastricht. Yeah, but again, let me first uh, give you the background. The point is that the drugs use will stay. People want to uh, smoke small amount of cannabis. And that won't be stop if I say it is impossible to buy it from here. So people will go on smoking and trying to get their drugs. So I think it is better to organize it here in a proper way. Um, and to organize that, or that, that brings a lot of, of problems. The best way to do it was that we sit together and organize it in a new regional way. That we join together, that we find out a way together, Belgium, Germany, the Netherlands, how we can deal with this problem in our border region. That is my idea, that we accept the fact that at this moment um, the uh, authorities in Belgium and in Germany allow small amounts of drugs, you can free possess them. There's nobody who takes it away from you. You will not be punished. They accept that. So please then allow people that they can buy it in a proper way and don't hide that and don't let go of that to the, to the criminals and to the mafia. And that's the way I'm now pleading for. So you're, you are basically asking your neighbors in Lanaken, in Aachen, in Liège maybe, to open up coffee shops as well. Is that what you're looking for? That would be the best uh, thing, uh, I think, for all of us. Uh, if we take out the uh, cannabis use out of the criminal and illegal spheres, uh, because, be because of the fact that it is illegal at this moment, that causes a lot of problems and that brings the criminals in position. It's my opinion and my, I'm, I'm convinced for that, that the war on drugs now causes more problems than the drugs abuse itself. And here you see, and I can demonstrate that, in the Netherlands we have more than 20,000 deaths because of the fact of alcohol. We have about 15,000 deaths yearly because of the use of tobacco. We only have two or one, maybe zero, that's because of the fact of cannabis. And what we do, we allow alcohol, we allow the use of, of tobacco, we regulated that. And we are fighting against these, uh, what is it, use of, of, of cannabis. And that's so silly, it's, it's hypocrite. I can't understand why we do that. We give a platform to the criminals. We make them, we bring them in position. So let's stop with that. Let's work together, let's organize a regulated scene or whatever, and I'm sure we will ban out the problems. So what do you make then of the comments made by Belgian Prime Minister Guy Verhofstadt, who's, who's written to your Prime Minister, Jan-Peter Balkenen, and basically saying this is a scandal, we do not yeah. want any coffee shops close to the Belgian border? Uh, first of all, I would like to say to uh, Mr. Verhofstadt that he should first read clearly my proposals. Uh, and my ideas. 
and not just bring them in simple ideas to the people because of the fact that at this moment there are election campaigning. Uh, he is, he is, uh, there is an election coming in, in, in Belgium and he is campaigning. You're, you're saying he's not seriously talking about the drugs problem, he's looking to increase his popularity with comments like this? That, that's, that's what I'm saying. Uh, the point is that he um, has not a clear idea what I'm doing and I invite him to discuss that idea in front of your camera because I'm sure when I'm explaining to him what we are doing, we are not bringing our coffee shops to the, to the border. We are just trying to overcome the problems around these coffee shops, to make them more in control. That's what I'm doing. And to find better places where I can position these coffee shops. We are not bringing them to the, to the, uh, what is it, to the border. What he is doing, he is bringing his clients to Maastricht. And then he should be fair on the one hand, or he should forbid the use of drugs totally and then fight against it and say okay you will be punished if you have amounts of drugs or he should uh, give that free and then also organized uh, the way of selling these drugs to the people but not complaining because of the Maastricht is trying to get rid of all the problems that is that the, 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 these are caused by the Belgians itself. You're saying you're looking for a solution in a Euro regional of course. capacity. Uh, what do your neighbors say about that? Um, we discussed this two years ago. I invited them all and we had a conference on that. And they agree in the analysis. But the point is that we all see that in uh, Europe, our leaders, our political leaders, they uh, have um, yeah, the more national views and they don't want that anybody um, m yeah, make some steps forward uh, regarding drugs, regarding uh, cannabis. Um, and especially France is um, against it. Because in France there is just one answer and that is repression. The France, the France president says no drugs. But the fact and the reality is uh, some slightly different because in France the drugs abuse and the drugs use is more twice as much as in the Netherlands. And we have there in France an enormous illegal sector. That is what is the outcome of uh, the policy of France. So I think the best way would be that these uh, political leaders would sit together, that they le the, uh, hear what are the problems that they come here and that I can show them what are the problems and then I hope that they open their eyes for a real solution. So you would agree with uh, what, what, what the Belgian Interior Minister de Waal is saying, this should be a case being discussed by the European Justice and Interior Ministers at a ministerial yeah. level in Europe. Yeah, I invite them to do that. Uh, for instance, uh, they discussed um, that and said that Maastricht is offending against the, uh, the Treaty of Schengen. Uh, I say it in the other way around. Belgium is defending the, the is is offending the uh, the Treaty of Schengen because they don't um, have a proper imbalance uh, a balanced policy regarding their own drugs. So let's sit together, let's work this out, be open for new solutions because the way we are doing it now we are losing. We are the losers for the future because the criminals. They are the winners, the big winners, and they earn a lot of money. So let's stop that, let's organize it, let's regulate it, so that we can clear it up for our people.